We're now going to get into page 34. Okay, now page 34 is a writing page. It's to reinforce memory, so you can download this as many times as you like and keep working it until it makes sense to you and you can start seeing it where the keynotes would be. Here you see, remember, two for the right octave, two spaces down is keynote one. So try to remember this. Two spaces up in our low octave on the staff is keynote one. See, they're shaded in there. In the middle, which is our crossroad, is keynote one, but they're the crossroads. So knowing where one is really helps you figure out any, any note name, because you can count to seven, right? Well, let's take a look. We have here a note which is five. Okay, so it's telling you here, right hand, they want you to do it for the right hand, which we know is gonna be the upper staff with keynote five. So keynote one, this is an example, we're gonna go one, seven, six, five, and that's where I would have drawn my five. Okay, that's for that note. So here's the question B. They want right hand keynote four. Okay, so now there's two ways you can do it. You can go from keynote one, line, space, line, space. So one, two, three, we can put four. Or we can go this way, one, seven, six, five, four. So you wanna count every space and every line. So one, two, three, so I'm gonna go backwards. One, seven, six, five, four. There, we just drew that note, four which if you remember is F. Now we know where F is and how to, where to find it on the staff or figure it out ourselves. Let's do the left hand. They want left hand keynote four. Remember, let's know where one is. Remember we said two spaces up is one? Let's count one, let's count up now. Two, three, oh, it's on a line. See, that keynote four is a line note. All right, so you can finish these. Left hand keynote two. Remember, left hand, know where one is, that's two spaces up, that's one. Well, keynote two is the line above the space. That's two, right there. So you've just drawn that note, which is, this is his home. Wherever a note is on a staff, they have a specific home. The one you just drew here is this home, right there. Nowhere else, that's his home. Right hand, keynote three. Here's your keynote. Crossroads one, let's count, because this is a line. We know that this is gonna be a space, line, space. So remember the ladder? So one, two, hey, it's on line, the first line of the staff. Line, space, line, one, two, three. Now, if you see a note on line three, or on line one, the first line of the upper staff, you know that it's keynote three. This is his home, and only there. Remember, anywhere, if there's a note on a staff, they only have one home. Remember, one key per house. Okay, so this, now you know, when you see a note on the first upper part of a staff, it's right there. I'm gonna quickly go through this with you because then you can download it yourself and try to remember. Right hand, key note two. Remember middle one? Well, look at it, it's right here. Just below the first line, it's in the space. We usually call that space zero. Right hand keynote, ah, oh, there we go, keynote one, we know where that is. That's the crossroads one. Left hand keynote six, okay, so left hand is the lower. So remember, we're gonna know keynote one, two spaces up, let's count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, there you go. Keynote six, if you look, is A. We know if we see a note on the left part of the staff, which is, we're gonna learn later, the bass clap. This is where his home is. All right, review, rewind, get to know this page. We're gonna go on to page 35. Again, it's gonna give you the opportunity to write in your stems. Remember, the more we write, the more we re reinforce memory. So do that for yourself. Take the time out, because it's your homework too. Okay, so now we're gonna see dots. These, you see these little dots? They're called staccato dots, or think of them as hot notes. It's just a, a way of playing to create a different type of sound. Like if I do this, or this, you see, it just creates a different sound. So these dots that are usually on the heads of notes are called staccato dots, and they mean to play the, the note very detached. But do you notice something with the first beginning part? 
these notes are lined up directly above each other. That means they're going to be played at the same time. So I'm going to play through this song so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, the left hand's playing. Five, three, four, two, left hand. Seven, two, four, two, one, five, three, five, three. Now, together. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. Rest, rest. There we go. Can you practice that? We're going to get to page 36. Again, an opportunity to draw in your stems. The first one was written for you. Okay, and we see that there's nothing happening in the left hand. We start with our right hand on keynote one. The left hand doesn't come in until here. Look, on keynote seven. Seven and one are always beside each other, right? Which would be, we would see as B and C. Okay, but seven and one. Remember, we don't have an eight, because that's an octave. Eight becomes one, so seven and one are always beside each other. So look at the left hand starts here. Let me draw that stem in for you. You can do the rest. I'll draw this one too so you can see the difference. So let's go. Great big whole note. Great big whole note. So your left hand will have finished this middle one. Good. Double bar, end of song, moving on. We now have my favorite sound. We see here two notes at, in the left hand played together. That's new. Okay, so what does it tell you? It wants the little finger on six. It tells you here if you want to take a look to help you out. And your, okay, we're going above middle one. You see how this was middle one? We're gonna count one, two, three. So. We, went, we borrowed. Our left hand's playing like this. So let's just play our left hand first. We're going to play this. Nothing. Now just that three, which is E. Rest, rest. Now together. Now the repeat sign is here. So play this line. So from repeat sign to repeat sign twice. Let's go. Now look at here. Note two. It's not this two because that would be higher up. It's in the left octave. It's going to be this two. Remember where one is? One, two. So that's his home right there. Two. So we've moved our hand to this position. Nothing. Okay. Well, let's try it together. So we're going to go like this. Hold that one. our left hand. Both with finger fours or no keynote fours. Under. Okay, so this is something new. You see how I, I turned my hand? Let's start. Let's do that part. Three, four, five. Now we're going to go under with our thumb on keynote six. Seven, one, two, three, two. Hey, what's this? We're going to peek into the next page, but I'm going to show you right now. Five, this is a five sharp. Okay, let's learn about that. In Just Play, you'll see these type of stems. It's just a way to finish or tell you what type of beats they are without putting all the notes in or the note heads. Okay, so we know that this means one beat, which stands for the quarter note. Well, let's peek into the next page to find out who that is. And what's new? So these are symbols in music that you will see. It's a B. This is called a flat. Okay, so let's, let's take notes six and seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Play it on the piano to hear the sound. Now, I'm going to put a flat in front of the seven. See, in front of him, I'm going to put a flat. Well, that means to play it a half step lower. So a half step, these all move in half steps. I'm going to play the black key. So look at now I'm going to play six to seven flat. See, there's seven. I lowered it. Flats mean to lower it. And it looks like a little B. All right, and that, just to remember that as being a flat. 
You're also going to see these. They looks like a tic-tac-toe sign, but it's a sharp. When you think of sharps, it means to sharpen something, to raise it, right? The opposite of flat. So let's play key notes four and five. Hear the sound. Now I'm going to see four and four sharp. Well, here's four. Let's raise to play four sharp. You see? Now you hear the difference? Four and five, four and four sharp. Well, what if I said four sharp or five flat? Would four sharp and five flat be the same key? Yes. So you will learn that on keys it has it can have two names. All right, this would be known as F sharp or G flat. Okay, but don't worry about it. Just know where it is. You're just going to play. We're going to take you into a new position. It's called position four. So our thumb's going to start here. And our left hand, we're going to keep it on position middle one here, like this. But if you look, our little one's going to be on four too. This is called position four or position F. So take a look at the right hand. Oh, we see the flat, seven flat. So four, five, six, seven flat. Good. Crossroads one, seven flat, six, five, four. Now you need, may need to practice it a little bit just to get comfortable, but we're gonna play this together. Now we're gonna play. From here, we went to four and this four, you see it's the same four, it's one, two, three, four, higher. And you can see that it's higher. So that's what we're gonna play. We're gonna play it higher. Okay, practice that, especially this part. Remember, these are finger drills. Finger drills are exercises for our fingers. You wanna do that with when you find all these position pages. They are drills to help our fingers get stronger. The old woman in a shoe. Again, we can draw our stems. And again, we're going to see here that we have running notes. You see the beam? So that's just to tell you the speed. All right, so I'm going to play the song for you so you can hear it. See here, I had seven flat. Let me give it the stem for you. Okay, this is how you will have drawn it. So I've got middle one with my thumb. Pointer went to seven flat. I played them together. Now remember this? The two beat note with the dot. There's three beats. See, the we always gonna look at the top number. We haven't really talked about the key signature, but you're just gonna look at the top to see how many beats are in each of these measures. See there, you can see them divided up, and that's just so that we can see and it's easier to see when we see a division of notes as opposed to everything written at once. Okay, so I have here now what we need here is a flat which will be on your PDF. Hold that left hand while you play the right hand. Left hand plays the six. Okay, and this will be changed too so you'll see dotted. Okay. 